Um, I'd like to thank um, Sarah, our special guest speaker, for coming along as well and sharing her, her knowledge with us um, in, in a few minutes. Um, this recording, uh, sorry, this webinar is being recorded and it will be uploaded onto our website for any, um, you know, future future references for anybody. And we can also send it out to anybody as well. Well, we'll be sending it out to, to everybody. So you've got a record of that. Um, before I hand the um, floor over to Sarah, I'd just like to go through a few of the opportunities that we have for our businesses in Uttlesford. So this is our team. There's myself, Sarah and Rachel. We form the economic development team. Um, we're on hand to provide um, advice and support for our businesses. We also signpost for any financial advice and support and any grants that are available. As well as our webinars, we have um, some grants. So for this particular series, we have our Digital Boost Grant. So it's a grant of £250 up to a maximum of £2,500. It's match funded and it's for our businesses that are wanting to develop or improve their digital assets. Uh, some of the items you can apply for are a new business website or an upgrade to an existing website, uh, online booking system, e-commerce platform, creation of mobile app, digital skills training courses uh, and cyber security. There are also many other items that you can apply for. If you go onto our website, there are um, there's some examples on there and it does set out the criteria. Some of the other grants we have, we have our business startup grant. So that's £2,500. Um, that's match funded and that's for any businesses that are two years old or younger. We have our high street premises enhancement fund, so that's up to £5,000 and that's match funding and that's to enhance the front of your premises. We also have our rural England prosperity fund and our low carbon workplace grant. On our website, we also have a free to download startup guide um, that provides you with all the information of every, sort of every day startup from day to day running um, of a business. So if you need any information about starting your business, please go on there and download that. We've also updated our website and our directory. So this is resident facing. So our business, oh, businesses, our residents can find your business on there. Um, it's also really good if businesses want to collaborate with each other. So if you haven't already done so, I would advise you to go onto our website and um, register your business on our directory. We are accepting our um, nominations for our business awards for 2024. Um, there are 12 categories. You can nominate another business or register yourself. Um, and you, also, you can also nominate for multiple um, categories. It doesn't just have to be the one. So if you go onto our website, the information's on there. And lastly, we have our e-newsletter. Um, e so this goes out fortnightly and this provides the latest advice and support to our businesses um, that we have available. So if you haven't subscribed for this, I would again advise you to go onto our website and subscribe. It just keeps you sort of up to date with the latest advice and support that we have. OK, so without any further delays, I'd like to hand the floor over to our special guest, Sarah, um, to provide you with the information that she has today. Thank you. I'm just going to make sure that I am able to move through the slides. Um, I seem to be seeing your mouse still on the screen. Oh, okay. And, uh, so I may need you to move the slides on still because I'm not having any functionality okay. to no, me to do that. That's fine. Let me. OK. Yeah, is that working? Excellent. Thank you so much. So we'll make this a double act today, the best way to do it. Um, so welcome, everybody. And I'm really delighted to be presenting this, as Andy said, the final session in the Digital Boost for Business um, webinar collection. Um, just a couple of asides before I get started. You are really lucky as residents of Uttlesford. I have to say, um, myself and my colleagues work with councils all over the county of Essex and Uttlesford is one of the most progressive in terms of how it supports its businesses. 
with business support programmes such as the Digital Boost for Business. Um, there's a wealth of support available to you. Andy um, did mention some of this. And I really, really, if you do nothing else, make sure you sign up to the newsletter so that you're kept informed of all the business support events that are actually um, going on across the county. And if you could please just move on to the next slide. Um, so my name is Sarah Brockwell and I'm an Uttlesford business too. Um, my office is in Great Dunmo and um, has been since I started my business back in 2010. And I have a background in marketing and PR, um, always as an employee. So I started my career um, with a global American fintech organization, and that was a huge uh, publicly listed company um, valued at $13 billion last time I checked and um, had lots of experience in the world of finance and technology um, and then moved out to Dunmo and decided to um, take a career break, took a voluntary redundancy package and started my own business to be in charge of my own destiny and I created Cerebi Marketing Limited in 2010. Since then I've had the absolute pleasure of supporting well over a thousand entrepreneurs through the County of Essex and beyond. And the type of support that I offer, some of it is delivered through um, public sector funded business support programmes, so such as um, this today. But some of the support that I offer is through, um, I have private clients, private companies, who I will work with on strategy and tactics for marketing support. So I see that we've got a number of people on the webinar today, which is fantastic. And I wondered if I could very quickly ask you all in the chat function, so if you could bring up the chat function so that I could see it, if you could just quickly in the chat function, write down one sentence about what your business does because this will really help me if there's anything relevant I can pull into today's session. If you could just type in the chat box what your business does. Andy, I might need you to read those out because they're really tiny on my screen. So cat sitting services through pop up visits. Um, OK. Anybody else? Yeah, we've got a couple of people um, okay. writing. Um, so we've got um, TKE Landscaping Limited is a garden design, landscaping and garden maintenance business. Great. We've got. Blow is writing. Yes, yeah, so I have worked with the landscaping business, so that's exciting as well. Um, actually, interestingly enough, I'm currently working with a veterinary nurse in um, Uttlesford and she's developing a really exciting tool for um, vets to use. Uh, Saffron Screen, I know Saffron Screen very well. Yep, excellent. OK, we'll just wait for one more and then I'll move on. Suffering screen again. Suffering screen. Excellent. Excellent. OK, so we've got we've got a nice collection of um, of businesses um, that are that are obviously based in Uttlesford. So if I could ask you to move on to the next slide, please. 
And the reason that we're all here today is that we have a common interest in trying to determine what, um, okay, we've got a, a startup in the AI field, I saw pop up on the screen there, which is excellent. Mm. Yeah, AI field, excellent. So I've made a note of that. Um, so we're all here today to determine what tools we could use to market our businesses. So what digital tools are available to us and the majority of us, I guess, being owner managers, i.e. the business is ours, we run the business, we're responsible for the entire business and so we wear many hats. So as owner managers um, with limited time and limited budgets, what are the tools that I have found are the most effective for you to use to market your business? The dictionary definition, therefore, of digital marketing is using internet and online based digital technologies to promote your products and your services. Um, so we are largely focused on services amongst our audience today. Um, which is not unusual. The, the majority of businesses, Essex is home to around about 90,000 registered small businesses, many more that are not registered because they are sole traders, um, for example, but 90 or 1,000 registered business, the majority of those provide services as opposed to products. Digital marketing is the perfect tool, management tool for small businesses who, as we've already established, are very busy, um, and, but recognise that they need to promote their businesses to sell effectively. Um, it's particularly relevant for startups as well. If you're starting up a small business, it can be the best thing since sliced bread. <clears throat> but if nobody knows that you're out there, then you are acting in a vacuum, essentially. So digital marketing, perfect for existing businesses, as well as those businesses that are newly launched. We call them startups. And digital marketing can be extremely easy to use. Um, it's there are exceptions. Some digital marketing tools are slightly more um, complicated to use, but most of the digital marketing tools that I'm going to introduce to you today are very, very easy to grasp, um, easy to use. The majority of them are completely free to use as well. And as owner managers, we like free, don't we? And I always say, and this is so true with nearly everything you do in business, if there's something particularly um, a demonstration that you need to show you how to do something, don't forget YouTube is a fantastic resource for you. So if, for example, you've downloaded the latest app, the latest business app on your phone, and you're a little bit confused as to how to use it, or you've just bought, um, I don't know, a new microphone because you're going to be recording your own videos and you're looking for some expert advice. Jump over to YouTube, which is another digital tool. Jump over to YouTube and type into the search bar, how do I use this app? or how do I set up this microphone? Um, so YouTube, a fantastic resource. So anything I show you today, if you want to learn more about it and you want to see real people demonstrating the tools that I talk about, jump over to YouTube and you'll see a wealth, uh, 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 you know, a big collection of videos that people have uploaded. So thanks, Andy, if you could move on. And I'm going to illustrate these cool digital tools to you via a case study. 
And a case study is a real life example of a client that I supported and used various digital tools to actually um, support them in their particular uh, project that I ran for them. And I'll introduce the client to you in a moment, but the tools that I used that I'm going to run through with you today consisted of those listed here. And I'll lead you, leave you to read those yourselves. And these are tools that are readily available, digital tools um, with the addition of, of a smartphone, readily available to everybody um, for their own business. So next slide, please. Meet our client, our case study client. Back in the summer of this year, I was contacted by a lady um, who had recently acquired a sandwich bar in Chelmsford, and that sandwich bar was called Munch. It was not a main high street location. In fact, it was um, on a kind of residential area, but opposite quite a large secondary school. And the lady that had acquired the sandwich bar had um, no experience in marketing, but she was really, really dedicated to her business. And she had invested in a new logo. So this was the sandwich bar. Um, as it looked at the point at the first time I, I went to meet them back in the summer and I was met by the proprietor and the owner of the sandwich bar who said to me, Sarah, we have a little um, loyal audience of, of a small number of people that come into us to make their sandwiches, but we've got plans to grow and we think that we can offer sandwich platters and fruit platters and snacks um, to local businesses to use in their meetings. So I'm sure many of you will have been in a meeting that runs over lunchtime and the lunch is catered where these lovely trays of platters of sandwiches are delivered for everybody to tuck into while they eat their lunch. And quite rightly, the proprietor had thought, well, look, that is another target audience for us. So, Sarah, please, could you help us develop um, our offering and develop our brand to this particular target audience, the corporate audience in Chelmsford? But not only that, we think that we can get more people to actually come into our sandwich bar and buy their own little lunches, their little takeaway cheese and pickle sandwich and can of Diet Coke. So we think we can do more of that business as well. So we want you on the one hand to focus on the corporate audience, building that up from scratch. And on the other hand, we want you to get more footfall through the door, more people coming in and requesting that we make them their sandwich for their lunch. And by the way, Sarah, we have a very limited budget. And that's the kind of thing that I love to get my teeth into. I love, really am passionate about businesses and helping businesses grow. So I went away and put together a proposal for the client as to how we would achieve the particular outputs. So if you could move to the next slide, please. Um, as I've said, this was an existing sandwich bar in Chelmsford under new ownership. And the owner had invested a significant amount of money um, for a, a designer to design a new logo for the sandwich bar. And that was it. They just had their whole marketing toolkit consisted of a new logo. So if you move on to the next slide, please. The um, top left is the logo that they had um, purchased, which is a logo that Pretty obvious, it said sandwiches on it and it says buffet platters on it and it says the name of the company. And that's all I had to go on. So I thought, well, obviously, if you're asking me to do some um, design work for you um, and some branding, then a logo is not much to go on. So I'm going to have to build up 
a brand kit for you. Um, a kit that consists of your core colour um, palette, the different colours that you're going to use, as well as the font style that you're going to use if we do newsletters, if we do printed things. To keep consistent across your brand, you're going to need various um, assets. And one of the digital tools that I used was a digital colour wheel, as you can see the screenshot here. And there are loads of digital colour wheels that you can um, use. They're all free to use. And what that digital colour wheel does is you can input your existing colour. So, for example, the brand, the logo that they had had designed is a lovely shade of teal. And what the digital colour wheel does is it gives you complementary colours that you can use in a colour palette. So if you move on, Andy, you'll see that um, that teal is the colour block on the um, left of the, the table. But the colour wheel showed me that there was a shade of pink, like a Barbie pink, as well as a shade of um, kind of a, a light brownie colour, orangey brownie colour which complemented the teal, the existing teal. So we adopted those as part of the corporate colour palette for Munch. We said, OK, we like those um, and we'll use those in our marketing literature. So as well as the colour palette, we also had to do um, some work on what the brand of Munch was all about, because we, we were stuck with the name. The name's fine. I haven't got a problem with the name, but we needed to really unpick, well, what is Munch all about? And this brand tree, as you see on the left, is something that I have developed for my clients to use. And it's a really effective way of nailing exactly what your brand is all about. So Saffron Screen, for example, if we ran you through the brand tree exercise, we would start off with the brand name, obviously Saffron Screen, and then we would move to the next tier down, which are the is the essence of the brand. So how could you uh, capture the essence of Saffron Screen in three or four words? It's a really, really difficult exercise to nail and it involves lots of um, advice from from a, a, a consultant such as myself, as well as lots of input from your existing clients. So personally, I've used the Saffron Screen facility. And if you ask me the essence of the Saffron Screen brand, it would be local would be one word. It would be family would be one word. It would be intimate. The experience of going to a Saffron Screen event is very intimate. It's nothing like going to um, a, a view or another cinema. Um, so you're going to capture what the essence of that brand is. Then you're going to move through, if you have a strap line for your brand, you're going to then move down to what are the messages surrounding your brand. And if you look, I know it's really difficult to see on the screen because it's so small, but for Munch, some of the messages consisted of, OK, well, we cater for special dietary requirements. All our food is freshly prepared. Our food is tasty and wholesome. We use locally sourced produce. So what are the key messages that are really important to your brand? And then from those key messages, you can then develop slightly more in terms of if you were in this case, we were creating some some messages for LinkedIn. What might be some of the slogans that you use on a platform like LinkedIn? And then at the very bottom of the brand tree, you'll see there are three different columns and those are for where you capture what makes you good. So what makes you a good cinema saffron screen or what makes your cat sitting service good what makes it better so what does your cat sitting service do that nobody else does 
liked it the best. So what's the real unique selling point about your service over everyone else? And that's how we start to build up the brand using digital tools. So next slide, please. And remember that my original brief was to build this new corporate audience and that we had a very limited budget. And also I might point out as well that we had a very limited time frame because the, the proprietor um, wanted me to deliver this whole project within four weeks. So I just had a four week window to build this project. So next slide, please. I said to her the first time I went into the sandwich bar, what do you have in terms of assets for me to use? And she showed me the logo, which I've already showed you. And she also showed me um, a collection of photographs that she had taken of the food. And she'd taken these photos on herself on her mobile phone, which I've showed you here on the screen. Now they're okay. They are not that outstanding in terms of the way they're presented. The food looks lovely, don't get me wrong, the food is lovely. But I said to her, look, obviously going forward, you want to be <clears throat> taking the photos yourself because you don't have the budget for a photographer. So I showed her different ways of taking photos. And if you move on to the next slide, I just quickly using my mobile phone, took some different photos from a different angle, different perspective of the same types of platters that she had presented me with. And I said, they look different. They kind of invite you to look a little bit more closely, which is obviously what you want the audience to do. So the next slide is another photo that I took of a BLT sandwich and I showed her simply using the functionality on an iPhone, how she could manipulate that photo on the left hand side to have different versions of it, to add more colour, for example, or to add a tint to it just to make it look different. So that's I would probably bet a lot of money on the fact that all of you on this call have a smartphone to your disposal and that your smartphone will um, have the facility to take photos, but also to um, edit them in a similar way. Um, so that's something if photos are important to your brand that you can consider using. So next slide, please. OK, so we've established that we need to build up as owner managers, we need to build up some assets, some marketing assets, and those assets will include our logo, and they will often include some really nice photos. So I've showed you how to, to do those. Now, in order to um, promote the platters, the sandwich platters that she was launching, she had drafted a flyer herself. And you can see that flyer on the screen. The left hand side is the front and the right hand side is the reverse. So this flyer was an example of a sandwich platter that she was um, selling to Chelmsford City Council. And it's very clear what she's offering and it's very clear what you have to do to order the sandwich platter. Um, she's got the the um, opening hours and she's got other messages like that she um, can cater for dietary and, and, and allergen requirements. But it doesn't really inspire me to buy it. First of all, there's no pictures of the, the, the food on there, um, which is always we know that um, you kind of eat with your, your eyes first. So we need to show the audience what they're actually going to be buying. So I said to her, OK, well, what we need to do next on our list within our four week window is we need to design a really nice, impactful flyer. So we went back to our colour wheel and we decided that the colours we would use in a flyer, we wanted a very vibrant, um, use that vibrant pink colour. So if you move on to the next slide, Andy. I then created a very different and hopefully you'll agree more impactful flyer. 
and then the left hand side is the front of the flyer and on the right hand side is the reverse and not only did I create the flyer but instead of calling the platters option one option two option three option four we actually gave them some names we gave them their own brands so as you can see that first option there is the Chelmsford platter and the second option is the Marconi platter. And the third option is the Essex platter. And the fourth option is the Munch platter. So it looks very different, very clear. Again, um, what people need to do where they phone, um, what they do to order. Incorporated a QR code, as you can see on the front of that flyer and on the reverse, actually. And the QR code, um, I think she wanted it to point to her Facebook page because she wasn't um, going to invest in a website at that point. So um, taking those images, you'll remember those images that I'd taken on my smartphone. On the reverse side of the platter, I laid them out. Um, and also I managed to get uh, the proprietor a slot on BBC Essex to talk about her business. And that allowed us, if you just see on the bottom right hand corner of the reverse of the flyer um, as featured by BBC Essex, which gives you credibility um to any business if any business would like to be put forward to talk on bbc essex please please let me know drop me a line i uh present regularly on bbc essex so i can put you forward to to speak but um within that flyer remember this is a flyer that was aimed at the corporate audience because it's promoting the platters we took some of the key messages that are important to the corporates, like, for example, that the um, premises has a food hygiene rating of five. And like, for example, that um, the produce is sourced locally and all the packaging is recyclable. So we decided what's important to a company that's buying in these sandwich platters and we made sure that we represented it in the flyer. So the next slide, please. This shows us just different options for um, the colour of the flyer. Um, and as I said, the proprietor really did like that um, vivid pink. Um, but I, I just wanted to show you the different colour options from the palette. OK, so next slide, please. I mentioned QR codes and um, I use QR codes frequently for businesses when designing promotional materials. And I happen to use the digital tool, which is the QR code generator, um, which is found at www.qr.io. And simply where I've circled in orange, you just simply type in the URL that you want to generate the code for, and it generates you a QR code, and it's completely free to use. Thank you. Next slide. Good. So remember, um, we're still trying to build this corporate audience. And we decided that a LinkedIn company page was really important. She didn't have a LinkedIn company page. She didn't even have a LinkedIn personal page. So next slide, please. The first thing I did was set up a LinkedIn company page. And I used, again, an image of a part of a sandwich platter and I ensured that all the details were completely filled in. So many people will um, start a LinkedIn company page, but they won't fill in all the different fields, as in the phone number and the URL and so on. So make sure if you're starting a LinkedIn company page, that you fill in all the different fields. And once we'd set that um, page up, we then had to start inviting people to follow that page. So I was able to do that. I've got an extensive network on LinkedIn and I was able to invite some of my connections to follow the LinkedIn company page. And once we started getting followers, we started posting. 
And um, one of the examples of a post is shown on the right hand side here. And it was a simple poll. What's your favourite sandwich filling? And the options, I think, were cheese and pickle, egg and tomato, um, chicken and bacon and ham and salad or something. And we were started regularly posting these polls. So the next slide, please. And then as well as creating polls, I wanted to create um, a supply of social media posts that she could post and repost and use and, you know, repeat, rinse and repeat. And we came up with the concept of sandwich of the week. So um, created all these different posts featuring different sandwiches that she could post regularly, sandwich of the week. And then on the right hand side, created this particular post that was promoting the Chelmsford platters. Now, I used the free digital tool Canva to create these social posts. And the thing I love about Canva, first of all, it's free, but I do actually have the paid version, which gives me slightly more functionality. But um, it's free. It's super easy to use and it contains a number of templates which means that you don't have to start from scratch when you're creating something. So you can hop onto Canva and you can say, give me an Instagram template and you just drop in your logo and any other um, words that you want to use. Next slide, please. And by posting um, the lovely pictures of the lovely sandwiches and doing some polls, and doing some other features, we managed to build up a following on LinkedIn, which started at zero and we managed to get 63 followers to that LinkedIn account. But I've put here that they were relevant. So the followers were actually people who were responsible for ordering food for their company. So they were bang on the target audience. So next slide, please. And then the final piece of the jigsaw was to increase the brand awareness for people that might be walking past or driving past the sandwich bar in Chelmsford. Remember, it didn't have the luxury of having a high street location. It was kind of tucked away. So we wanted to make people aware that, you know, it, it existed, but also to tap into the ready-made audience at the senior school that was across the road. So the senior school had around about 800 pupils as well as teachers who, um, albeit the children were not allowed out at lunchtime, but the teachers would go out at lunchtime. But the children obviously um, were around on their way into school and when they left school as well. So how did we make them aware of the sandwich bar? Next slide, please. Um, the first thing that we did for consumers was to arrange the BBC Essex interview and add that as featured on BBC Essex to all the marketing collateral, and put a big sign in the window to say that we, we've been featured on BBC Essex. And we also started using some stickers, some little circular stickers with the Munch logo that when the sandwiches were made up, and put in a sandwich bag for the person to take back to their home or their office, that we would put a sticker on the outside of the bag so that other people could see, oh yes, I recognise um, where you got your sandwich from. We started collecting comments, positive comments from customers as well. And we started using those in um, promotional displays as well as newsletters that we designed. Next slide, please. And that certainly brought people through the door. We um, had a, a huge increase in footfall into the sandwich bar. But then if you have a, a huge increase in sales, you need to ensure that you maintain those customers, don't you? You don't want them to come to you one day and then to move on to your competitor. So you need to um, create customer loyalty. 
And what's the greatest way of developing customer loyalty is to give your customer something for free. We all like a freebie. And one of the most widely used tools for um, for giving away freebies and increasing loyalty is a loyalty card. So if you move on to the next one. We created the Munch loyalty card and this was a card the size of a business card or credit card. So it was easily um, able to be kept in a purse or a wallet and very, very simple concept. Buy nine sandwiches and get your 10th sandwich free of charge. So the loyalty card on the left has the um, circles that, that were to be stamped. And on the reverse of the loyalty card, we have the QR code, which I believe goes to the Facebook page of Munch and also the option for people to sign up to the uh, mailing list for Munch. And every few months, um, we would send out a newsletter for example, a seasonal newsletter. Um, back in the summer, they launched a range of milkshakes, for example. So that went into the summer newsletter. And then in the winter newsletter, they're launching things like jacket potatoes and, and soups and so on. So that allows you to keep your customers informed. Remember, not everybody's on Facebook and not everybody's on Instagram. So don't rely on social media alone to keep your customers informed. Try and have a mailing list where you can send them e-shots. But loyalty card, fantastic. Um, and as you can see the example on the right hand side, I had some stamps made with the M for Munch and the ladies um, who make the sandwiches, the first thing they ask the customer is, have you got a loyalty card? And um, if they have, then that's fine. They stamp it. If they don't have, most people will say no, but give me a loyalty card. And it's really increased customer loyalty. OK, next slide, please. Now, um, once you've got customer loyalty, once you've got customers that are loyal to your brand and use your services, you really need to be ascertaining and surveying them as to are you delivering, are you doing your job properly? Are you delivering a good service? Do they appreciate your service? And there are various digital tools that you can use for that. One of which is SurveyMonkey. You can free of charge put together a survey on SurveyMonkey. And again, SurveyMonkey has a number of templates. And you put together a survey on SurveyMonkey and you send it out to your customers and you ask them whatever questions you want to ask to get feedback. And that will give you some benchmarks as to whether they do think that you're delivering a good service. And assuming that you get some really good results, which I've no doubt that you do, you will do, you can then come up with statistics like in our latest customer satisfaction survey, 99% of our customers were extremely satisfied with our service. So um, it's a great way to collect, collect satisfaction data, as well as I should actually add another slide in here, um, uh, Google Reviews. So Google Reviews is a really, really good platform for collecting um, customer satisfaction type data. So next slide, please. And um, one of the um, tools that I mentioned was having a newsletter, a digital newsletter, as opposed to a printed newsletter. And the tool that I happened to use for this client was MailChimp. But sometimes I'll use MailerLite, Constant Contact, HubSpot, different tools, different newsletter tools. Even Canva, you can design a newsletter in Canva as well. But a lot of clients will ask me or they'll get really kind of het up on what do I put in a newsletter? 
what can I possibly say that my clients will find interesting in a newsletter? And one of my go to suggestions recently has been, why don't we ask a chatbot what you could put in a newsletter? So, for example, here, I this is a screenshot from chat GPT, which is an open AI chatbot. And I know we've got a startup in the AI field on the on the webinar today. But I asked this particular chat GPT, um, I think it says there, give me give me three or five ideas um, for newsletter content for a sandwich bar. And there you are. It generated me some lovely content that I could use in a newsletter. I might want to tweak it slightly. I uh, might want to limit the number of words. So I might say using no more than 300 words. Give me three topics, three ideas for a newsletter. But you can play around with um, chatbots yourself, but they are hugely um hugely beneficial when you are a little bit stumped for ideas you can simply ask chat gpt to generate some ideas for you so that's another digital tool and it's free which is great so next slide please um set up there for a template in mailchimp for a newsletter and as you can see um, it the newsletter is fully branded with the logo and the colour palette that we chose. And this particular newsletter was the first one that was sent. So it had a nice letter from the proprietor herself saying welcome to, to Munch. And um, then different parts of the newsletter you were able to click through to um, you know, to Facebook page, for example, or to download menus. So use a digital tool for your newsletter. And as I said, I used MailChimp, but you could equally use MailerLite. You could use Constant Contact. There are just many, many more. So newsletters are great digital tools for um, helping you promote your business. And then the penultimate slide are my um, suggestions for some other digital tools that you might like to consider. Um, I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the role of Google Analytics in helping you analyze the performance of your website. And Google Analytics is a kind of science unto itself, but just to have a basic understanding of how many visitors you've had to your website, for example. What have they clicked on? How long did they spend on your website? Where did they come from? So did they come to you directly on your website or did they come via a Google search? Google Analytics is a great free digital tool that you can use to analyse your small business. And many people go down the route of paying for adverts um, and these adverts will ensure that when somebody searches for cat sitting services in Uttlesford, for example, um, it means that your listing will appear at the top, at the very top, because you've paid for it to be there. Um, and that's fine and you can do that and that works really well. Um, it is quite expensive to do that effectively, and it depends on what keyword searches you use, and it all gets very scientific. Um, so I do recommend if you want to look at paid um, search results that you speak to a search engine optimization expert on that. I think I mentioned HubSpot previously. HubSpot is a digital platform for inbound marketing and sales. It's phenomenal. It contains so many different templates and guides and how-tos and top tips, as well as 
giving you an actual platform that you can use to do marketing through. Um, people constantly struggle to find the time to manage their social media platforms, their social media accounts, I should say. If you're running a Facebook account, a TikTok account, an Instagram account, each of those is almost a full time job in its own. So why not use a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer or even Canva you can use to schedule your social media posts. So you pick up on a digital tool that will help you manage and schedule your social media. And then finally, um, on, on my other tips for digital tools is a tool called SEMrush. And I have limited experience of SEMrush, but I've heard very good reports of it. It's a tool that allows you to analyse how competitive you are in terms of search engine optimization. So check that out. Maybe go over to YouTube and do a search for what does SEMrush do? And you'll get somebody explaining that to you. So if we just go on to the final slide now, Andy, um, I'm going to open up the floor to questions, but I would just like to give a little um, promotion to my own mailing list, which is, um, you know, not, not spammy, not overtly salesy, but from time to time I produce kind of top tips documents and this particular one the series is called Sarah B says and there's always a theme so it might be Sarah B says about Instagram or Sarah B says about websites but this particular one is Sarah B says and it's the top five digital tools to help you sell more so if you hop over to my website you'll be able to join my mailing list and receive some top tips directly from me. But that's enough self-promotion. I want to open it up now to everyone um, and anyone to ask any questions. Maybe if you don't want to unmute, then you can use the chat box and Andy can um, read the somebody's, somebody's typing. So we've got, um, what do you think of the community chat function in Facebook? Um, yeah, I mean, I think who has actually asked that question? Uh, Fiona. Do we, do we know which company Fiona is from? I don't. No, I think that it, with all social media, Fiona, it depends on your target audience. And there is a... Catsitter. Um, great, yeah, Catsitter. So there's a great resource that I use um, to analyse what type of people use which type of platform. And Facebook has a very distinct demographic, the type of people that use Facebook. It's funny because I have a 15 year old and a 12 year old and I mentioned Facebook to them the other day and they were like, huh? what's Facebook? Never even heard of Facebook. So, for example, if your your target audience is Gen Z, so youngsters and teenagers, definitely Facebook, community chat, nothing. Don't touch Facebook. If your target audience is a Facebook key type target audience, then the community chat function is a great tool that you can use. And you just have to look at the kind of um, growth of other social platforms like Nextdoor, which is um, a, a similar community type chat room, if you like. And next door is a really, really good tool for, um, you know, chatting with members of the community and using that um, platform, if you like, to engage with people who might be using your cat sitting services.
I'd also recommend for cat sitting, dog sitting, um, that you try and collaborate with local vets as well to see if they'll allow you to um, place any cards or posters or flyers within the um, veterinary centres. And also if you wanted to maybe offer clients of XYZ vets a discount, then you might find that they promote your services for you. We've got a couple of questions coming in. Yeah. Um, so, Chloe, um, what about the use of MetaSuite on Facebook for scheduling Facebook slash Instagram posts? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not suggesting that if your platform has its own scheduling tool like Facebook does, that you come away from that and use Buffer or Hootsuite. Keep it all on the one platform if you if you can. So that's, you know, absolutely use um, the, the meta tools. OK, and Fiona said thank you. Um, vets have been very good. She's found to beans cat rescue. Ah, brilliant. Toe beans, sorry. Brilliant. My dog is joining in now. He's heard the word cat. <laughs> OK, have we got any any additional questions? If not, what I'll do, I'll be sending out the um, the slides so you have all of um, Sarah's details and, and our details as well. So if you have any questions, um, you can, you know, be in contact with um, with either of us. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're here to help you and, and give you any advice and support you can. OK, all right, then we'll I'd just like to thank you, Sarah. I mean, that's been really that's been brilliant. Um, some really, really useful and helpful information there. And um, yeah, so I'd just like to thank you for, for coming along and, and, you know, and sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Lovely. OK, then. Thank you, Sarah.